go away. I don't feel like doing a video today. Can't you see I'm a tortured soul? Yeah, it's liquid nitrogen. It's cold. It's very cold. Goodbye. Listen, it's cold, but nothing is as cold as lost love. No, oh, all right. I'm Seth Noir, the man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting scene ain't loud. Yes, liquid nitrogen. Let's go pour ourselves a mug. Okay, so you go to your TA to get yourself a glass of liquid nitrogen. Now, liquid nitrogen is very, very transparent, so you might see the TA throw a little bright ball, a plastic ball in there. That's so he can, he or she can tell when the liquid nitrogen is near the top, so they don't overflow. Okay, so take a good look at it here, and I'm going to pour the liquid nitrogen. Okay. Okay, so back. Okay, here we go. A frothing mug of liquid nitrogen. Okay, so liquid nitrogen is indeed very, very cold. It's around minus 195.8 degrees Celsius. And it instantaneously evaporates in our normal temperature. So, for example, I'm going to pour some here. And wait for it, and it's gone. Completely gone already, evaporated back to gas. That's how fast it evaporates out of the styrofoam. So, if you do get a little on you, it'll probably just roll off. It's really not that much more dangerous than boiling water, but don't sit down whenever you deal with liquid nitrogen, because if you spill some on you, it might catch into a pocket of clothing and it can burn you then. Also, don't put any straws, pens, mechanical pencils, or anything that's like a hollow cylinder in here because liquid nitrogen will shoot up the top and might get in your eye. Don't put the thermometer in the liquid nitrogen. You'll break it. Also, don't pour the liquid nitrogen down the sink. Recycle it. And don't drink the liquid nitrogen. All right. Okay, so. What we want to find is the latent heat of vapor, vaporization of liquid nitrogen. So we're going to have a cup of liquid nitrogen, and we're going to take a heat source, a room temperature aluminum cube, and we're going to dunk it in the liquid nitrogen. So since the liquid nitrogen is already at boiling temperature, the, temp the, the liquid nitrogen won't change temperature. So all the heat that is gained from this aluminum cube will go in to evaporating a certain mass of liquid nitrogen. Let's look at the equations. All right, so we start with conservation of energy. All the changes of energy added on must equal zero. Great, okay. Then, okay, so each term, here's the terms. This is the, the latent heat of vaporization. That's what we want, times the mass evaporated. And then here, added to the energy to change the temperature of the aluminum, and then there is some delta Q other we're considering that zero. Well, that equals zero. And then algebra, we get this. Okay, so this is what we want. Let's, let's go through this. So we have the specific heat of aluminum, average specific heat. This will be given to you but be careful which one you use. Make sure you use the one that's appropriate to your temperature range. The mass of the aluminum, well, we can get that, no problem. The initial temperature of the aluminum will measure that, it's around room temperature. The final temperature of aluminum you'll be given, because that's the boiling temperature of liquid nitrogen, minus 195.8 Celsius. And then, ah, uh, this one is the tricky one to get. How much mass of liquid nitrogen is evaporated. Ah, let's go. Okay. Okay. So, so first things first, we have our aluminum cube here in the air. So let's grab the temperature from the thermometer. Look on it straight on, no parallax, one decimal place. Excuse me. This. 
Then let's grab the mass of this. So make sure that our needle is centered by the little knob on the side. Okay. And then on one side, notice it's a little handle paper, uh, little paper clip handle here. So we'll put a paper clip on the other side. And we're considering the mass of the thread negligible. Find that mass. Two decimal places. Okay, great. All right, so now here comes the tricky part. We've seen how fast liquid nitrogen evaporates. Now, styrofoam is a great insulator, but the temperature difference between the liquid nitrogen inside and the room temperature outside is enormous. So there's no helping. The heat will be conducting in from the outside, and it will also evaporate liquid nitrogen. So how can we tell what mass is being evaporated due to the changing of the temperature of the aluminum cube as opposed to the mass lost from the heat conducting it from outside? How can we tell the difference between those two losses of mass? Think on that.